I am back for the Daily Rapid Arena. It is Saturday, August 26th. Um, I think I'll just join as people trickle in. Welcome to XLS, Zactress, I be blundering, Libu. Welcome everyone. So I'm late joining the tournament, about 35 minutes late. I streamed the weekly Rapid Arena uh, just a few days ago. And that one I also late joined, but have a lot of fun, instructive games. So that's the goal for today, playing Paco Jones Yo. Decently high rated player, but not online. Maybe busy doing pirate duties. Oh, okay. Uh, not the greatest connection. Love your content. All the oh, best. I love your words. Thank you, Nicola Spav. Okay, free rating points. <laughs> I won in zero moves. What to do? So, hopefully we can get a real game. I'm top 50 in Rapid on Lee Chess. Let's see this, uh, this leaderboard. Oh, Peshka on top. Wow. Almost 2,900. Okay, life goals. So we have E4. I'll play Sicilian. Stick with my main openings for now. Maybe in later games I'll take some opening requests. Um, but yeah, I'll play knight c6. And I'll play an accelerated dragon, which has been one of my main weapons recently with the black pieces. Do you find that you're better over the board or online? I mean, over the board, generally the games are longer, so they're higher quality. So naturally the play is better from both sides. But... I think sometimes it's more like my quality of play is more contingent on like my mental and physical form rather than the medium of which I'm playing. So F3 instead of queen D2. I'm pretty sure I can play queen B6 here. Um, I mean, this is an opening I picked up like within the last year and a half to two years. So I'm still trying to learn the like all the branches. But queen b6 has a benefit. I'll just play it. It has a benefit of pressuring b2 and uh, this diagonal. And there's potential tactics. Like For example, if bishop b3, I'm pretty sure I can take on e4. Because there's some issues with uh, the knight being attacked three times. Someone in the chat says, no way, Eric, I'm playing you. Okay, um, not sure if that's my actual opponent, but I'm, I think I'm going to go for this. Knight takes e4. And there's knight of five, knight takes, knight takes c3 or bishop takes c3. Yeah, let's go for this. Okay, I was mainly calculating knight f5, but here I can take with the bishop or the knight. If I take with the knight, then I'm pinned and there's c3. But then I have knight c2. So it's kind of an interesting decision. I like taking with bishop, though. I think it's simpler. Like, offer the trade... I mean, we could end up trading like queens and knights, and I'll be up a pawn in the end. Also up a pawn in the beginning. Okay, but I'm I'm taking time every move. I have to look at my options. I mean, taking with knight has the benefit of attacking the bishop. And black can't 
or why can't castle there? Yeah, I probably do take with knights. Because in general, the queen trade favors a side whose king is less safe. And if your king is more safe, which I think is the case for me, then it's a sign I shouldn't trade queens. Okay, now I can take the bishop and probably play queen e3 check. And some d5 move in the air. And the game is going very swimmingly so far. And it's not even duck chess. So again, taking my time. I mean, d6 is probably like the natural, normal move. Queen e3, there's queen e2. We could trade... And then d5. But I have d5 right away. Takes and then maybe rook d8. Rook d8, queen c5. Could play rook d8 immediately. Rough. Also, Hello. Blank. Lapdog millionaire. I mean, there's f5 as well. I feel like I'm just spoiled for choice here. I probably shouldn't take too long. 34. I kind of like rook d8. Because the prospect of d5 looks very nice. It feels weird to not have any of my center pawns moved. So white plays c4. So I guess trying to discourage d5. If I play d5, takes and bishop e6. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, c5 runs into this. Yeah, so bishop e6 is... Uh, it looks a little bit weird, but I just want to win back the pawn. Ooh. Oh, no, white's queen. Okay, so I'll take here with a double threat of taking on b3 and also threatening f5. Thank you, Imbus. Thank you, Adornian. Thank you, Seaburn. Okay. So yeah, if you're just joining, this is the first game of the Daily Rapid Arena. Uh, going pretty smoothly. Have a queen and two pawns for rook and knight. Yeah, f5 looks pretty nice. Oh, welcome to Joel Gargas, who can't stay, but thanks for stopping by. All right. Have to move a little bit more quickly. Can go for simplifying any sort of mating ideas. F5. F5 just king takes, or F4 king takes. I think I'll play rook d8. Simplify further. Yeah, 
Yeah, White's been moving very quickly this game. Happy Saturday. Welcome back, Mark Siebert. There's gotta be some places on Earth where it's Sunday already. But probably Saturday for most people. Okay, so yeah, I was gonna say my simple plan was to make another queen. Okay, um yeah, I'll quickly check the opening, but I'm pretty sure this move is actually the best way to punish white's move order. Let's see. Yeah, queen b6. And then, like, white has to be really, really careful here. Ah, this line. Yeah, white white can still equalize. But they have to find knight d5, which it's a hard move to play. So knight f5. It gets messy because a lot of things are attacking each other. But white's uh, white's basically much worse after knight takes c3. Because I counterattack the queen and I'm already up a pawn and a piece. Queen d2, queen a5. Hey, thank you for the raid. WFM Anna Chukava. Or Anna Kuchava. Sorry for maybe mispronouncing. Welcome, everyone. If you're just joining, I just played my first game of the stream. We had some some sort of opening trap. I don't know if I'd call this a trap, but it's a very strong line when the pawn's not prepared. I guess it is kind of trappy. Knight takes e4. Got a very good position. So back to tournament. Um, I did late join, but the goal is to play some some high quality games. Okay. Um, I'll probably mix up the openings. I'll start with e4 and then future games I'm white, maybe I'll play a different first move. Do you play Dragon Sicilian? Yeah, that was a, basically the opening of the last game. It was an accelerated dragon, so a slightly different move order than the normal dragon. Ooh. What do I want to do? Is my opponent going to play the Stafford Gambit? Okay, it's Stafford Gambit time. Uh, it always feels awkward here. Like, I sometimes play Knight C3 and try and transpose into Halloween. But let me go ahead and play what should be the refutation. Bishop E2. We'll see how prepared my opponent is. Yeah, there's a small chance my opponent is watching the stream. So there's a few moves. Um, the H5 is a move I like to play. Nice work, Eric. Preparing this. As always, no mercy. Thank you, Zactris. So Bishop B6. Yeah, this is a move I used to play. The idea is to prevent D4 because of Knight takes E4. Um, but now H3. And it's hard for black to really achieve much. Probably knight d2. I like the prospect of knight c4 or knight f3. Threaten the fork. Or even this move. Like d4, e5. So, some choices here. I think I'll play this. Threatening this. Do you play the Evans Gambit sometimes? It's not an opening I've played too often. It's an opening I've wanted to study, because it definitely aligns with my, uh, my aggressive repertoire for online rapid blitz and bullet. I've definitely played it a few, like probably a handful of times online. Definitely played against it too. Yeah, in positions like this, um, I think it's sometimes a common mistake for White to castle too early. 
And then that could potentially walk into like a lot of dangerous attacking ideas. It's one of the ways people go wrong in the Stafford. But it's important to be patient here and just play as restrictively as possible. So now I can play d4 because there's no more pressure against e4. And then, yeah, want to develop next, maybe play e5. Bishop e3 looks pleasant. And this position's not like completely, completely winning, but it's just very, very pleasant for white. And have some choices what to do. Have b4, a4, a5 is one idea. I guess black wants to play some eventual g-pawn push. Which I probably shouldn't be too afraid of, but yeah, I do have to figure out what to do here. I could start with a4, threatening a5. Yeah, let's do that. Let's see what black does in response. Because there's a6 or a5. a6 might allow for like the eventual b5 break. And a5, I'm wondering if it makes sense to go back. Like knight d2, knight c4 looks more attractive now. There's also rook b1, b4. There's also like queen d2, bishop f4. But queen d2, there's g5, which I'm not super fond of. Yeah, I think I'll just go back. It feels like I've lost two tempi moving back and forth. But the knight served its purpose. It, it made black retreat. Now um, I'm looking to simplify a little bit. I try and get rid of one of black's bishops. Oh, there was a question, why knight f3 over d4? I think it was because the pawn was hanging. Oh, in this position. Yeah, the pawn wasn't hanging. Um, I guess if I play d4, then the knight's a bit tied down. But I would be threatening this. So maybe it would lead to some similar type of position. Yeah, sometimes in these positions, there's multiple like good ideas. It's just about choosing one that's the most logical. Not overthinking things. So knight c4, take, take. I'll have the bishop pair getting rid of... Most likely, black will take. Maybe queen e7, also a possible move. I don't know where I got these quack do bits just randomly appear in people's twitch accounts usually you have like you pay for them like they're one way to support the streamer i think there used to be a case where you could like watch ads and get bits not sure that's still a thing though okay so taking is a move black is threatening to take take and take So yeah, let's start with taking. And then probably queen c2. Queen c2 is multi-purpose. Maybe three reasons to play this. I get off the d file, so I want to discourage c5. I reinforce e4, which could be a target. And maybe I prepare to queenside castle. But maybe not. So I am calculating b4 takes a5, but then there's b3. Not sure about that. I could castle now is not the 
Probably not the worst thing ever. I could play b3 and just restrict. You'd be completely restrictive. In Rosen, let's go. I, I do have to go. My time's ticking. But I'll also try and stay here. I think I'll play b3. Maybe not necessary, but it doesn't really change the dynamic of the position. Puts the ball, puts the ball back in box court. So it's like a solid ground stroke from the baseline. So I could play bishop g4 and then f3. I could play bishop d3. Again, choices, choices. Bishop d3. So from Black's perspective, like these are the, the pawn breaks to always keep in mind. I guess f5 might be coming, but f5, e5. Yeah, thank you, Kaka. Thank you, Cheese Drake Quactory. That's a great name. Ooh. It's a slightly scary move. Have to play this. Yeah, now I really want to get my king to safety. I'm not enjoying this pin. I think it's still fine, though. Like, f5, I can play e5 still. And this is turning into a blitz game. Time's about level. Oh, your name would not have happened without the Duck Chess videos. Well, you're welcome. Okay, so time to castle. I mean, the Dark Swords are weak, but I have the Dark Sword Bishop. I could castle Queenside too. Which is maybe even safer. Like queen here, I just defend. Yeah, so far it's been a pretty classic strategy against uh, the Stafford Gambit. Also, thank you, Adornian, gifting 10. That's so kind. I really appreciate that. If you were gifted a sub, say thank you to Adornian. Can you use the emotes too? What was I saying? Oh yeah, sometimes like the best strategy to play against a Stafford, but also against other gambits, is you just take the pawn and then be super, super solid, just play prophylactically. And it's a very annoying style as a gambit player to, to play against. So yeah, let's take the knight. I can see the bishop pair, but king will find a, a safe place. I will say that Black has like played pretty well for getting a tough position early on. <laughs> like I'd imagine that Black hasn't made any any mistakes other than playing the Stafford Gambit. Okay, so looking to play Rook H E one pretty soon. I mean, from the lock side, you want to look for weaknesses in white's position or ways to create weaknesses. Like the dark square is their 
They're usable, but I can just kind of deal with it. Hello, Mr. Rosen. Hello. Welcome back to Rusman. The G the G pawn looks backwards, but it's so easy to defend, and it's hard to attack multiple times. Oh, thank you, Cybot CB as well. Welcome to everyone, maybe just joining. See one person from the Charlotte Chess Center. I was in Charlotte earlier this year, but I didn't actually visit their chess center. I just went to the, it was a Charlotte Open tournament as a special guest. Okay, so rookie two looks solid. The point of rookie two is to double up on one of the files. I'm not sure which file yet, but I'm I'm staying flexible. Another point might be to bring the queen to e1. Or maybe to e3. So this is nice having um having the pawn over defended. So the queen's no longer tied down. Okay, I'll play queen e3, setting up some potential discover check. And now queen f2. Now black either has to allow the queen trade or retreat. And then maybe I keep expanding. Oh, forgot that was a move. Wait, do I have... If I play e5, there's takes and bishop defend... Or bishop gets defended. Let's move back. <laughs> Opponent offers a draw. I think now I can play f4. And then basically force a queen trade. Yeah, there's a funny line, queen h2, g4, trapping the queen, almost. I guess queen h2, g4, queen goes back, but then I can trade and win the g-pawn. Should I have taken the draw? I have to show no mercy, even if it's against the Stafford Gambit. My most loved gambit. Okay, time is good, position's good. Yeah, so far it's been very gradual, like just super solid, like gradually trading and simplifying. So now f5 would be a blunder because bishop takes f5. Let's not do that. e5 is interesting. I think I'd like to start with king c2. Like I'm in, I'm in no rush. f5 would still be a blunder. So yeah, let's get all the firepower behind the e-pawn. And now I'm defending the rooks, so I'm threatening to fork. I guess it makes sense to trade rooks. Or uh, trade bishops, I should say. Simplify further. And now the plan is to play f5, rook f4. Go after this pawn. Defend e4 with the king. And the rook can probably find a square on g4 if necessary. b5 is one attempt, but I think... 
think I'll just ignore it. Yeah, so now both pawns are potentially some issue for black. Let's play c4. I've not lost a single pawn yet. Okay, so now the goal is to put the rook on the C file. Ooh. Opponent has six seconds left. I still want to be like precise. I think I'll play this and then rook f4. Where's my connect eight? Oh, where's my pawn mate? Okay. <laughs> I was calculating uh, rook d7 here and then let's say g5, c5 checkmate. The smiley face mate. Anyway, that's how to refute the Stafford Gambit. As much pain as it brings me, it also brings me some joy. At least when I play the white side. Yeah, so the line I like to play is black um, against this line, which is objectively probably the best line against the Stafford. Um, so I like to play knight g4. d after d4, queen h4. This is a magical line that Jonathan Schrantz, aka Vampire Chicken, discovered. And there's some fun lines like f3, h4. But white's still, like, according to the engine, white's doing very well here. Okay, uh, moving on. So the opening so far, I've played two games. The first game was a... Uh, the first game was zero moves. It was a non-opening. And then it was Accelerate Dragon, and then playing against the Stafford. So if I'm white again, I'll play something other than e4. I am open to suggestions from chat. Oh yeah, I didn't lose a pawn that game, right? I still had all eight pawns. The most powerful non-gambit. King f3 probably means knight f3. I'm not going to play the beach cafe. This is instructive rapid chess, not destructive rapid chess. So I'm black. So all the opening suggestions are for white. <laughs> uh, what if I just play e5? Oh, someone says French. Oh, this is a mouse slipped French. Or the more energetic French. Yeah, E5 is just the French on steroids. The Janish Gambit. I used to play the Janish, also known as a Schliemann. Elephant. Okay, let's let's not play the Stafford. As much as I was really tempted to um to go for a Stafford Gambit there after the previous game. Okay, we have a scotch. So some people were asking for me to play the scotch, but now I'm playing against the scotch. And there's a few moves here. There's knight f6 and bishop c5 are like the two main moves. But then there's also some sidelines. Like there's queen h4, which is dubious. I'm not going to play that. There's bishop b4 check, which has been in my arsenal. And then there's queen f6, which is also playable. I think I'll play bishop b4. This is a sideline that at first looks completely unproductive because I'm provoking c3. The bishop is going to have to move again. 
usually this move is a very typical beginner mistake because very often c3 will benefit white. But there is an underlying purpose that when white plays c3, and it's the move white should play here, then I'm depriving white of playing knight c3. And then I'll play bishop c5. So there's some argument that white can't achieve like the most rapid development with this knight. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the main line, bishop e3. So white's threatening to take and then win the bishop. So move to play as bishop b6. Welcome back to R. Beasley. Happy 42. Okay, and now I'll admit that I'm a little bit out of theory, but I think there's a lot of like thematic ideas here. I mean, the move I want to play is knight f6. And there's also knight e7. I like knight f6 because it hits a pawn. And imagine takes, takes. I don't think I'm so afraid of like the eventual e5. Because I have some d5 in that position, even knight d5 and sack a pawn. So I'll play knight f6. And not only am I threatening the pawn, but I'm also looking to play d5 and try and exploit white's pieces. Opponent's playing pretty quickly. What opening do you play with white? I play a lot of different things. My last over the board tournament, throughout the tournament I played, I think four different first moves with white. Yeah, I started with c4, d4, e4, and knight f3. So a lot of a uh, lot of mixing things up. In tournament play, I like to prepare for opponents and then try and exploit any potential holes in their opening repertoire. But I definitely have my set of like go-to openings for when I don't know what my opponent plays. So it looks like Bishop F2 is a very classic tactic here. Like if this were blitz or bullet, I'd probably play it immediately. But in rapid chess, I'm actually trying to to understand what's happening after king f1. Because white is threatening e5. I guess after king f1, I just play h6. And that should be OK. Yeah, this is an issue with the bishop not being uh, protected. So now if white takes, I take back and defend my bishop. If it moves back, then I move back or take the pawn probably. <laughs> my bishop on f2 prevents bishop h4. So it's still being useful. Okay, happy to simplify. I'll trade the queen and there's a funny idea to play bishop e3. I guess then I'm asking for king e2. But then the bishop finds a nice square on f4. And the funny idea is not bishop e3 itself, it's that I'm threatening bishop c1 because b2 would be undefendable like if i get one more move i would either win the pawn or rook or both or maybe knight in some cases like it's such a weird tactical idea but i don't see how white even allows it like in order for white to allow it they have to play some like nothing move yeah, king e2 unleashes a rook, but okay, the bishop finds a happy place.
I'm really tempted to play d5, take, 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 and then bishop a6. Probably not necessary. And maybe all I'll do is play bishop b7. But then knight b3, knight c5. Hmm. I mean, the normal thing to do is just d6. Let's be normal. Yeah, no need to be like overly creative. But I think a simple plan here is probably to castle, get the king off the diagonal of the bishop, and then go for f5. And then just try and get the rooks into play. Eventually open some files. Why can't king... Why king can't take the bishop? Well, the king was attacking the bishop, but then it was my move. Oh, or earlier. Um, yeah, earlier, if the king took the bishop, I was going to take here. This was a nice tactical idea. Then I would have forked the king and the bishop. Less school. And it would have been fun. Welcome back to the goat. So I could play g5. Oh, let's just castle. It does feel weird walking in, like putting my king on a square that's aligned with a rook and the bishop. But there's not really any way for white to exploit the king right away. And I'm ready to play this and this and be happy. Okay, the knight's maneuvering. Oh, also defending the pawn. Uh, let's start with rook b8. Simple move. Get the half open file, attack the pawn. Yeah, maybe I could have done this earlier too. Because white's going to have to play like a um, kind of defensive move. Now here I have bishop a6. What else do I have? d5. There's c5. There's c5, knight e3. Actually, I like, or do I like? I'm not sure if I like. Oh, there's also bishop e6. Yeah, this is a case where I was consider considering a lot of moves, like bishop a6 and c5 and d5. But I finally got around to considering this. I think this is definitely the strongest. And there's a tactical point. Of course, I'm threatening to take the bishop and win a pawn. But if takes, I don't take back. I take on b2 first. The in-between move. Ah, there was a question. Why not bishop here with the idea of winning h2? I'll admit I didn't consider that. It was probably possible. Although winning h2, it's not my my biggest priority. And yeah, this move probably just it wins a more important pawn. Oh, there's a funny possible mate. King d3 and then c5 threatening c4, king d4, and then c5 checkmate. I'm going for it. I'm made in two threat. 
still not interested in winning H2. Yeah, so white stops my hopes and dreams. Now I could take and then... And there's multiple ways to win another pawn. There's a funny idea to play this. And then if takes, I have bishop f5, king c3, bishop e5 checkmate. But there's... um. There's other pawn taking. Hmm. I'm looking for the most precise way to just wrap things up here. And there's a lot of like strong looking moves. I think I'll play rook f2. If white wants to defend the pawn, there's bishop d1, but looks pretty depressing for white. Oh, Jane Gold asking for Vienna. Okay, so maybe I'll play e4 next game. I'll try and fulfill the request. All right, let's bring the other rook in. Rook b2 incoming. I feel like an anaconda just coiling around its prey. The prey better prey. Welcome to Elite Donut. How's it going? Yeah, we do have the um, the channel point redemption for opening requests. This is a list. A lot of them are old, but uh, yeah, Jane Gold has the most recent request. I don't know what this means. Hair haver, if you're watching, this is from two months ago though. The at. Oh, bishop c two. Okay, let's take. I did not watch the movie Anaconda. I think I heard the song about Anaconda. Isn't there like a popular pop, pop song? Uh, let's do this. King d3, bishop c4 checkmate. It's not happening. Okay, that was pleasant. I mean, white kind of got into trouble early. I played a slightly offbeat line against the scotch. Yeah, as far as I know, like the best move is knight f5, which if you haven't studied this specific position as white, it's a hard move to even consider. The idea is to exploit the g-pawn. Why didn't you exchange rooks? Oh, here. Yeah, this is a position where like, there's so many ways to win. And I was trying to create some mating net. Also, in general, um, in these sort of cases, it's useful to keep the rook active. Because it's way more useful than this rook, which is just a bit more passive. Yeah, so here we see the list of so many opening requests. Alpaca. Oh, Kazan is in the chat. Yeah, I still have to um, fulfill this as well. Okay, if I'm white, I'll play f4. <laughs> and then maybe there's a small possibility we can transpose into a Vienna. Okay. The bird is a word. I'm uh, I'm checking this off. I 
I faced a few birds in my most recent stream. Okay, so yeah, the bird opening can very often lead to a reverse Dutch, basically a Dutch up a tempo. And there's a couple ways to play here. There's being catering the bishop or going for like some stone wall. Let's play e3. Like because Bach's committed to c5, there's an argument to like put the bishop here and then go for the fiancato. Yeah, knight a6 is a very strange move. I guess I'm not getting to pin the knight, but I'll get to check the king. And now I could play queen e2. I could play a4. There's a few moves to consider here. Knight c3 even. There's also taking... Like taking a knight e5 looks playable. Maybe I'll play queen e2. This has some Bogo Indian vibes. Like the Bogo is usually a defense to play as black against e4. Okay, so we do see the point of knight a6. I guess we'll trade. And yeah, I don't think knight e5 makes so much sense. Even though it attacks a queen, gets a tempo, it invites f6. And then ultimately I probably lose time. So I think I'll just develop like b3, bishop b2. Thank you to Matarama Sukimiko. Suko Miko. <laughs> Pretty sure I butchered that name. But thanks for subbing for the first time with Prime. Oh, there's a question about why not taking on a6. Um, I didn't want to concede the bishop pair. And long term, I, I think this knight is less uh, less scary of a piece. So now I'm playing knight e5 because there's no f6 coming soon. And I might be provoking the queen to block the bishop. But we'll see what, what black does. What game mode should a beginner start with? Um, I would say 10 minute chess or longer. That's probably the most common. Yeah, when you're just like starting chess, then blitz and bullet can be a little bit too fast. Even daily chess, like when you have a few days to make every move, it gives you a lot more time to think. It can be a lot more chill. Okay, so finding some nice harmony. And the idea is to put this knight on f3 and then have a very good grip on this e5 square. But it is a question, like what thing do I want to take with? If I take with pawn, it's like guaranteed space advantage and half of an f file. The downside though is I block the bishop and the bishop's just staring at the pawn. Yeah, I think I like taking with bishop. Because I get, I hit the knight, so black has to spend some time figuring out what to do with the knight. And this knight's kind of pinned to the pawn. And it's very hard to remove the bishop. Like black wants to play this, but I take on g7. I 
I imagine we'll see maybe this or this, maybe even this. But going forward from here, I think the plan is very simple. Like castle. Ooh, okay, castle queenside. Uh, do I want to make it sharp? I think I do. It's a logical choice. Like it's hard for me to actually attack on the queen side. I have a4, but that's just one move. I think I'd rather castle first and just see what black is up to. G4 bad double question mark. I hope you still have tea as I haven't seen you I drink do. tea for a long time. I'm drinking tea now. <laughs> it's been really hot recently. There's been like a big heat wave, so I've been having more cold drinks. I also have some some water. It used to be ice water, but now it's melted ice water. I'm actually drinking a tea that um, Axer Typo sent to me. Shout out to Axer Typo, who, oh, who's streaming right now. He's, uh, yeah, he's streaming Scrabble right now. He's a mod on this channel. He gave me some nice um, yellow tea, which is a lot more rare than like, green or black or even white tea. It was yellow tea from China. Okay, so this probably makes sense. And the idea of rook g8 is twofold. Maybe someday black wants to play this, but black's also defending the pawn so the knight can move. I can't really stop knight d7. There's a really cool idea here, though. I'm going to hold off on playing a4, and I'll play knight f3. This is a natural square for the knight. And the cool idea is if... Wait, does it even work? It might work. So now I don't have to say if knight d7. So after knight d7, I have this move. Happily allowing takes takes, and then I have two attackers and probably winning a pawn. We Okay, let's just do it. And if this move, I get forked, but then I just take the knight. And then I'm the one who's forking, because I win the, the pawn and then the rook in the end. Thank you, Ziptiff. So even though it felt like I should have been attacking on the queen side, I'm I'm actually attacking on the king side. It's where where I have the most potential. I guess this is a move though. F six, because takes takes. I can't really win the pawn because the g file opens. F six. If I take this pawn, there's rook h8 but i will say that if black plays f6 there is a very strong move for white which i will hold off until my opponent moves i guess if not f6 then i'm gonna win the pawn i'm back hey welcome back to adfost happy three years also, welcome back to Pam. Good to see you. Old Walter, got some regulars here. Okay, so yeah, F, F6 and F5 
I think are very similar in the sense that I have the same really nice move of knight f7. And the knight is making its way to the promised land. So I'm basically forking the rook and forking the fork. And this should be winning the exchange. So this bird opening is paying off. My bird pawn became an e-pawn. Flying down the board. Literally flying. Maybe about to be consumed, but it will be remembered as a hero. Amen. Oh, yeah, I can't save the pawn. I want to play this, but after it takes, I'm pinned. So maybe I play this. Go after this pawn. I still haven't lost a single pawn. I have eight, all eight pawns. F pawn is now a D pawn. So if I take, there's this move. Hmm. If I take, yeah, so take here. That's probably fine. I'm also considering this move. But then still knight f6. So yeah, it seems like I should take and then maybe queen g6. Preventing g5. Ooh. Unexpected. So now I have e4. So F-pawn's pinned. I'm dreaming of this move. This would be nice. Oh no, my pawn. It's a circle of life. All right, let's take this and then get the other rook into play. Ooh. I mean, there's a cute line, rook e1, allowing queen takes d5, and then I take on e5, because the queen's tied down to defending the rook. But my cute line is not happening, so I'll play c4. Connect for, okay, happy to trade queens. And now a g4 looks good. And g4, knight h6. So maybe, maybe this move first. I'm keeping some options open. So now g4, and g4, f4. Okay, let's play this. I have to watch my time a little bit. The idea of h4 is to play h5 and eventually trade off maybe a couple pawns.
Rook is a little bit precarious. A g3 comes. Yeah, the pawn is pinned. Yeah, the knight can find a new home. So I think my plan is to put the king here and then play this and go after the pawn. Black have taken the H pawn. I think it would have led to some trade. I would win like the G or F pawn. Okay, threatening maiden one. Not easy to stop. A rookie five. Yeah, okay. Connect five with a rook. I think that was a pretty smooth game. Um, yeah, just to show, the point of h4 was to try and trade. So if rook h4, I would take on g6. And then, yeah, f5 becomes weak. Oh, thank you, Pam. Gifting to Shinko Jiru. That's very kind. Also, thank you, Kazen, for suggesting the bird. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a feel-good game. And this move was a little bit strange. There were some questions why I didn't take the knight. Because double pawns look weak, but in this case... Um, yeah, to give away light squared bishop and to give black the bishop pair so early, I don't think it was worth it. And then, yeah, the rest of the game... It was quite nice. I like this idea, knight g5. Black had just too many weaknesses that were hard to defend. One mistake. Oh, queen h5 was a mistake. Oh, I should have played e4. What if takes? Ah, c4. I missed this idea. And if takes, I can take on e6. Okay, moving on. So I'll probably play for the rest of the tournament. 45 minutes left and some change. Oh yeah, when you're a sub on Twitch, there's a few perks. You get the sub badge next to your name. It's a sign that you're supporting the channel. And um, you get ad-free viewing, you get emotes, you get to talk in sub-only mode. Different people with different badges. Hey, it's Irene. Irene and G-Spates rocking the mod badge. Okay, so new game. Um... I can go through my opening requests. Benoni. Maybe I can go for a Traxler. Stafford time. Or Stafford. <laughs> okay. Stafford time. Might as well. Never played this opponent before. But they're not... They're not cooperating. I'll give them one more chance. If knight takes e5, we could transpose. It's still not happening. So, what do I want to do? I think I just be normal, like knight c6. 
I could play this move first, actually. Bishop g5 might be a little bit premature. So I really don't mind trading. And bishop h4 maintaining the pin. Um, the drawback for white is the bishop can't really return to the center in that case. Hmm. I'm so tempted to just go for the, the quick attack. There's also this move, which might might be the strongest. Yeah, how does white defend? There's that famous game with Mor Morphe. It was like the Opera House game. Morphe against the Duke. Morphe was white, but he had some similar idea, like bringing the queen to attack the F and, and B pawns. So if knight takes e5, there is a funny line where the king runs to c3. I don't think it's forced mate, but looks very good there. What top level player have you never played that you'd love to play? Mm. Ivanchuk is the first person that comes to mind. He played in Iceland. He played the Reykjavik Open. He was a top seed earlier this year, but I I didn't do well enough to get paired against him. Also Kramnik, I've never played. Also Prognananda, I don't think I've ever played. I was checking his at least his like public chess.com account. We have no games. Okay, um we're going into the funny line. Queen e3. At the very least, I'm winning the knight. At the very most, am I checkmating? Like, I want to play bishop e1, but then knight d2. Hmm. I could play c5, like setting up bishop e1 and queen d4. I should probably just win the knight, though. I mean, it's a, a pleasant position to ponder, though. Could repeat once. Repeating is not the craziest idea. Although, okay, let's just start with this. And now, now I'll take the knight. Yeah, I wanted to to checkmate the king quicker, but. Up a piece now. Life is good. Oh yeah, I've never played Kasparov either. That would be super cool. Of course there's a lot of like strong players I've I haven't played over the board. It's technically I did play Magnus in the, the Sinkfield Cup Simul. Oh yeah, I played Pam online. <laughs> okay, d4. d4 is looking nice. Just trying to seize control over the square. Knight's ready to come in. I have bishop d7 as well. But let's start with knight c6.
Yeah, this still has like some Stafford Gambit vibes. Because there's lines in the Stafford where black keeps the darks for a bishop and yeah, it just gets very bad for white. Castle first. So I'm unpinning the knight, so if takes, I take with knight. So knight c4 is coming. I guess after knight c4, I take it and then play this. Finding this and this. I think I still go for this. Like still looking for avenues of entry. How have the past two to three years been? They've been good. A lot has happened. My age has increased about two to three years. <laughs> Got a decent amount of travels in. Okay, no mercy. Oh no, my bishop. Oh no, my knight. Oh no, my checkmate. I wanted my pawn mate. Mm. I mean, where's my... Where's my mate? He's six. A quiet move. Okay. <laughs> yeah, white white skins revive longer than expected. Having walked up to C three on move nine. Oh, that was a fun game though. Um Yeah, generally I see this a lot in like lower level play of the bishop coming and just taking the knight right away. And from a strategic point of view, it's um it's not that great because white moves moves a piece twice just to trade it off and then helps activate the pawn's queen. And in this case white really paid the price right away. So we've got time for a few more games. Hey Eric, I can't believe it's been over a year. Wow. Wow. Happy 13 months. Post proof frock. Welcome back. Playing Peter. Okay. There is Mark Siebert asking for a ready gambit, which is what I'm playing here. So. Hopefully Mark is still watching. Gambit is not being accepted, but that's part of playing the ready Gambit. So I think to keep this as a Gambit, I can play G3. I could also play E3. A couple of approaches. I could play B3. Maybe I will play B3. I've been like the, liking these setups recently. Like Hikaru's pet line in online blitz. Yeah, box going probably for a Slav or semi Slav setup. But generally, this setup. 
And it has a reputation of being super, super solid. Oh, goodbye to Pam. Thanks for being here. See you soon. Knight d7. Knight d7 is probably preparing g6. So it's a question how will I want to develop, like e3 or g3? Or d4? Or g4? Hmm. Or knight c3? The choice is choices. I think I'll play e3. Like long term, if I feed Kato the bishop, like this chain is very solid. Rather have the bishop more centralized. And now maybe queen c2. Typical move. Now I want to keep ideas open of eventually playing g4. Which can be a major idea in these lines. So bishop e7. Yeah, so g4 here like already has some merit. I think I'll just play it. It just looks fun. It's not even a pawn sack. If knight takes, I can I can take right away. I can play uh, rook g1. Probably start with rook g1. But I'm trying to play in a more aggressive style. <laughs> the, the, the opening started with a ready gambit. It was a very, very solid opening for being called a gambit. But now it's getting more aggressive. And like from the black side, this can be a very annoying move to uh, try and figure out what to do against. Because now I'll play rook g1. And there's lingering prospects of g5, even like h4, g5. And it's pretty clear that black no longer wants a castle so black has to figure out like how to like proceed with the opening <laughs> this has always been a kids friendly stream yeah this is uh like i i try and keep things family friendly but sometimes we have moves like g4, and then the young children watching might have to close their eyes. I'm breaking some principles. Like, I'm not casting kingside, I'm pushing pawns away from the center. But it makes things fun. Thank you, Ackley, Isak. Oh, your toddler's watching. Shout out to your toddler. Shout out to all the toddlers watching. <laughs> Hope you all can learn a thing or two. Toddlers and adults and every everyone in between. Yeah, usually these positions of bishops on d6, which is a bit more active. So we see b6. I'm calculating g5, take, take, bishop b7, take, take, check, king f8, take, I win the rook. Mm. 
Um, let's do it. And not to mention that this is also basically the same idea. Like, I'm not sure what I would do with Bach here. Maybe cry a little bit. And there are moves to survive, but it's not pretty. I think this is a move I would play. And now what to do? Like the, these socks no longer work because I can't access G6. My H pawn is hanging, but I don't think I care so much. I mean, maybe just knight C3. And do I have to worry about my knight being loose? I think I just want to accelerate development. There's some cases where I lose a pawn, but if I can castle, get the king safe, and then like later probably open the center, either go for eventually knight b5. What are my other ideas? Maybe knight e2. It's a fun game so far. Like black's not cracking. Very interesting middle game approaching. So queen d6. Putting more pressure against the pawn. I think f4 is like a very natural move here. I could also start with taking. Yeah, there's a few candidate moves. It's hard to actually decide what to choose. Like F4. F4 looks nice, just keeping. Seems like it keeps things controlled. Future potential of bishop e5. So this resembles like a delayed bird of some sort. Interesting structure. This pawn chain does combine well with both bishops. Like obviously light squared bishop, but also dark squared bishop. Black's burning a lot of time. I mean, we've both actually been burning time like early in the game. It's only move 12. Opponents used about 60% of their time. Okay, so now I can take. I like the idea of taking. Because if pawn takes, I play knight here, hitting the queen and threatening knight c7. I assume the other pawn will take. And then I'll have bishop h3. Hmm. 
And so the bishop finds an interesting diagonal. It's defended by the knight. And it wasn't my primary intention, but I do prevent rook h2. Black can't quite cash in. I should know d4 looks a little bit scary here, but then I have this move, counterattack. I move like 96, I can take and then, or maybe, maybe take and queen g6. I have options. Cooking Forge says, you're using my strat, check my previous messages. I really haven't been looking so much at the chat and or your previous messages. I can uh yeah, I can always analyze after the game though. Um Bishop C eight. I have I really want to set up this idea. It's kind of hard to achieve. I could take and play queen f5. There's also bishop g2. Hmm. Oh, there's also take and knight b5. A lot of things to consider here. Queen d7. Queen d7, rook c1. There's actually a cool line. Let's start with taking. And then knight b5. So what I'm calculating is queen d7, knight d4. And then it looks like maybe black can take, but then I have this move. Threatening the rook, and when it moves back, I play this move. So this pawn is actually poisonous because of this idea. Like basically forking the rook and forking a square that forks a queen and the pawn. Black has consumed the poison. And now they're probably realizing it's actually really beautiful. The rook has to move to a square. I guess it can move here. But here and here, we'll eventually get attacked by a knight on f7. Mmm. And this move, I think this move is just trying to confuse me, <laughs> which maybe is kind of working. Uh, I just castle. I could take the rook, but oh wait, if I castle, there's this move. Wow. No, let's just um, let's take and then castle. No need to overcomplicate. So I won the exchange. I mean, black has a knight and pawn for the rook, but there's still so much pressure. This knight's out of play. Bishop f6. Can I trap the knight somehow? Feels close. I think I can simply play rook g2 and then double up the rooks. I'll leave the tension between the bishops. Now 
I'm looking for more of it. And this looks pretty good. Okay, now if I take... I think probably just take and move back. I also have this move. Let's go for this move. I mean, it seemed enticing to give back double pawns. But the G-pawn's still a, a big target. On F6, it's harder to attack. I'm keeping options open of this move. Yeah, I still can't win the pawn. Although now the queen's tied down to defending the knight. Okay, now I probably should take and play rook g8. It looks pretty strong. But what's my threat? Some idea of this and this. E4 could be a threat. Oh, E4, knight E4. I have to be careful. Play this first. Rook H5. I guess if C4, I just play B4. I keep the file closed. Okay. <clears throat> that was a fun game. And played a slightly offbeat opening. I mean, the ready usually has like a, as I was saying, a very solid reputation, but it got spicy pretty quickly. This position has <clears throat> has been reached in master level play. G four is actually the most played move <laughs> in master level play. Yeah, it's usually a move that the engine isn't so fond of. It still says it's playable. I think it just makes a situation that's very hard for black to react correctly. Yeah, so this all looked pretty clean. Bishop h3 was a mistake. Ah, uh, 92. Yeah, 92 was on my radar, like, previously. Yeah, I guess there's no need for bishop h3. Because black's not actually threatening to castle, because I take. 92 has a cool idea of this and this. Okay, back to tournament. In 35th place. Not Time so far content, away. My G. Oh, thank you. Thomas a dig engine 29. Yeah, so I'm 25 points out of first. Or no, 21 points out of first. But yeah, not worth berserking the rest of the games trying to win the tournament. I'm I'm accomplishing my goal by playing like fun and interesting games. I hope people are learning a thing or two. So we have time for at least one more game. I do have my opening request list. Evans Gambit, Catalan, Traxler, Vienna, please. Czech Pierce. 
I'll have to look up what the Czech Pierce is. I know what the Pierce is, but... Um, let's play e5, and let's go for... I played this opponent once before. Let's not go for a staffer. Let's go for, like, a normal opening. Okay, four knights. Yeah, please avoid using all caps or bagging in chat and keep things civil a little bit. So we have a Fortnite Scotch. This has a very solid, at a high level, it has a very drosh reputation. So, yeah, it might take some work to like try and fight for a win here. I'll play bishop d6. I think this is one of the trendier moves. Opponent is maybe prepared. Yeah, I'll admit, I don't really know so much theory. I mean, I know, like, basically where the pieces should go. Probably bishop e6. I'm wondering if I can get away with, like, h6, bishop h4, rook b4. Let's start with this. Okay, so now we're getting some endgame. Yeah, this is a very typical like imbalanced position for a Fortnite Scotch. And black has slightly ugly structure. At the same time, I have the bishop pair. So I think it's close to equal. But what to do? C4 or C5, C4. Some bishop e5 and then f4. Hmm. Yeah, not entirely sure what to do here. C5, C4, Bishop, A6. Mm. Okay, I think I'll start with C5. I was looking at this line, bishop a6, b3, rook e8. And this could be heading into, like, Drosh territory. But I'd like to apply, like, a little bit of pressure. Rookie eight now. So there's this pin. Yeah, we could be trading more. So if takes takes, I do have rookie three there.
I think this is my best try to play for a win. Take, take, rookie three. Oh, but then, man. I was about to go for that, too. There's takes, takes. Rookie three, rook takes hitting the bishop. Take and play king g7, but that's kind of slow. So take, take, take. Yeah, I really don't want to trade off everything. I might have to, though. I guess I could take and play rook b6. What is white doing there? Rook f3. No, rook f3 doesn't work, though. King f2. If I don't take, there's not a 5. I think I have to go for this. And there's a line like here, here, and then take, 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 take. Oh, it's just so drawish. I'll try this. So I'm going to king f2 and then take. And let's say we trade everything rook b8. And then maybe there's something. Take, take, rook e1. There, there. It looks like the best case scenario. I get like an active rook versus passive rook. Hey, it's Eric, Renzen Jess. As this is my 58th anniversary with the channel, please dedicate this next win to me, or not. Well, the first step is to win. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Welcome back. Hey, thank you, Gary. Gifting five. I might have multiple people to dedicate this game to. I'm down about three minutes on the clock. So I have this move though, but then then King F2. So did I just play E3 or um D4? I wanna take a draw so soon. I guess I start with this. And here I can play this. It does look drawish though. Uh, if, I mean, if this game goes another five minutes, which it probably will, then it won't count for the tournament. Oh, that's a move. Wait, does this not work there? Oh, that might not work. Oh, rook f3 I completely missed. I guess I take and play d4. Unless there's anything else, but not seeing anything. I have this move. Take, take, bishop. Oh, that's no good.
This is really not what I wanted. The one bright side. Okay, we'll trade rooks, I guess. The one bright side is this pawn is fixed on the light square. And I have a defended pass pawn. So there are like micro advantages, but maybe something to work with. And I don't think there's any risk of losing unless I lose on time, which hopefully won't happen. Do I just play e5, e4, e3 next like few moves? It's probably the plan. It's very hard for white to stop now. Yeah, we're getting deeper into the end game. I don't think white's stopping the pawn from just asserting its dominance. I think at this point it's like really close to winning. I mean, White has passer potential, but the two center pass pawns should be offering very good winning chances. Hey, it's a sound. Happy birthday to Ari from Emil. Oh, Eric, thank you. Please play more Stafford Gambits. <laughs> okay. We love watching your stream. I appreciate that. Shout out to Emil. And shout out to Ari. Happy birthday to Ari. If it's your birthday today, you have a very, very close birthday to me. My birthday is in about a week. Okay, so making progress, I think I'll, yeah, might as well throw an A5. So before I win the pawn. I'm trying to calculate this now. Maybe I should have started with this move. Although there's an interesting idea to play. Let me, let me think about this. I probably play e3 coming soon. play h5 as well. h5. Essentially forcing the trade. Now this bishop needs to find a, a better square, like maybe e8. To have access to both sides. A king wants to come to f4.
Yeah, now the bishop can deliver a check, like whichever square the king goes to, if it goes to a light square. If it goes to the dark square, then I just push. Yeah, it's still equal material, but these pawns are... They, they should be valued at uh, a little bit more than a normal pawn. So, yeah, threatening this or this. I guess I have to be a little bit precise. can also just leave the pawns as they are and win this pawn first. Okay, so black or white is going for one last effort. So now check there, there. It's actually a funny mating idea. If king e2, bishop b5, checkmate. If bishop e2, I make a queen. So this took a lot of work. But it goes to show that sometimes you shouldn't take draws too early. And try and grind down the opponent. Yeah, the tournament is over, so the game doesn't count for the tournament, but counts for some rating. I think that was pretty instructive. Um, I think White made some some decisions that maybe didn't seem too bad in the moment, but were very costly long term. Like taking the rook and undoubling the pawns, I think was a big strategic misstep. A move like King F2 should kind of keep things much safer for white. I would still try and push for a win, but it's much harder to make progress uh, with just this formation. You should start skating. Oh yeah, or these pawns should start ice skating. Ice skaters, as Hikaru would call them. And then going back further, let's see. Yeah, the engine just says it's close to equal. I was trying to make use of the, the pin somehow. So all of this was equal, but then taking, taking was like the first mistake. And then, oh yeah, then F4 was a mistake. Because this allowed the simple plan of pushing. It was rookie three. I guess rookie three was not one of my best moves. It felt like it, it put the most amount of pressure. But when I played rookie three, I did not see rook f3 coming. So I did make a couple inaccuracies this game. Bishop a6. Oh, the engine likes d4. I like this because it kept the option open of like maybe trying to take the pawn or pushing. Okay. Well, that's the tournament. That was a daily rapid arena. I did late join, but had a, a clean result. I think every game was super instructive. I might end up putting this on YouTube, this instructive rapid chess, how to beat, how to beat amateurs at chess. Like a lot of the games were exploiting 
maybe not the most obvious mistakes. One game was exploiting the Stafford Gambit. My first game was exploiting my opponent's absence and winning my forfeit. I learned the Indian defense. But which Indian defense? Instructive Rapid is my favorite type of Rosen stream. Can't get enough. Thanks. Oh, Eric. nice to hear. Thank you, Ace Midman. Is there a defense that's just called the Indian? There's some opening names that I'm not like as familiar with. Indian. There's Slav Indian. Oh, just Knight F6, I guess. But this can lead into like a lot of different things. I didn't know that Knight F6 was just called the Indian. <laughs> Interesting. And then there's Old Indian. Yeah, so if you're playing Knight F6, it's a question what you do against C4 and against Knight F3. Um, because there's a lot of branches. And Knight of Six alone is like a very flexible move. But generally you should be prepared for like the most common things the opponent can play. Oh, thank you, Gary. Gifting to Lulero Gar Gaming. Getting ad free viewership, yeah. Are Indian defenses named that because of the country? I would imagine. Doesn't chess have some roots in India? Like this one is probably very old opening. <laughs> the Slav Indian. Of course, King's Indian, Queen's Indian, Nimzo Indian. Oh yeah, there's this one. I guess if you're like, if you're in the process of exploring which openings to play, this is not a bad resource. Like this will, uh, leechess.org slash opening will give you kind of a, a cool overview of a lot of the major lines, a lot of the offbeat lines as well. Yeah, there is this weird like A6 move. I think A6 right away is playable. The normal variation. Oh, after C4, it's called the normal variation. Could you go over the Accelerated Dragon where you exploited the move order? Sure, let me make a study. Uh, so it was the first game I played this stream. I played a line in the dragon, accelerated dragon, which went like this, uh, g6, knight c3. And this was all very standard. Hey, Litsku. Thank you, Great Dane. Thank you, NLV. So yeah, I had this position earlier. And a lot of players will stumble into this position, not realizing that f3 can lead to a lot of trouble. It's like a very natural looking move because it prevents knight g4. But in this case, yeah, the best move is bishop b3. After f3, I play queen b6. And this has been played a ton before. It's so easy for white to go wrong here. Yeah, so f3 is like not a great move. And we'll see, like we see this reflected in the scores. It has been played in master level play, but I think most often the players who play this as white are not so well prepared. I'm surprised that Oparin played this. He should know better, but maybe it's still playable. But yeah, after queen b6, black wins a lot of games. And the idea here, not only we're hitting the pawn, but we're threatening knight takes e4. So 
yeah, my opponent played bishop b3, and after knight takes e4. Um, white is still okay after knight d5. But a lot of players don't know to do this. I was scared of knight takes e4 if I don't play f3. Oh. Yeah, so another common mistake here. So I had this once in the tournament game. My opponent castled. And then knight takes e4 is playable. It's a center four trick. I mean, it's all a fair trade, but it leads to a pleasant position for black. So for these reasons, as white, you shouldn't castle, you shouldn't play f3, you should play bishop b3. That way, queen b6 is no longer an issue because a bishop supported by the pawn and the line to the b-pawn is blocked. And I don't have knight e4 because there's no center four trick. So I hope that makes sense. And after bishop b3, there's a lot of branches. Like if you're playing this as white, there's different moves black can play. a5 is a move, d6 is a main line. Rook e8 become more trendy. That's probably what I would have played. Oh, s8 is a opponent who I played, is chief chem, or chief chem. Okay. Yeah, I hope this serves as a, a useful lesson. Actually, I had this position in the Beal Rapid tournament as a side event in the tournament I played in Switzerland. And I got to this position, my opponent took a long time and played the move knight ce2, maybe trying to sack the pawn. But then I play queen d4 check and I just win the bishop. So it's so easy for white to go wrong. Are you that much better after the center four trick? I think objectively it's equal. Like in this line, castling, castling, take, take. But if anything, black can maybe fight for a small edge. Like white has to play accurately. Only move not to be worse is takes, and then takes, and then, yeah, again, like bishop d3. But if we look at the resulting position, like white's not getting any edge. Black has a happy bishop. And yeah, I think I think I would play queen c7 here. And then maybe potential to expand on the king side. Thank you, Cheskin, for the bits. Happy Saturday. How to respond to the center game. So I think we've reached the point of the stream where I can chill and answer questions. Chess, chill, and Q&A. So the center game is this. And I think... I assume you're asking about queen takes d4, Stealing like the classic cent center game. Let's go. Oh, thank you, the gov. Solving with prime. I appreciate that. Oh no, my Jeff Bezos. So against this move, um, just knight e6. Keep it simple. Hit the queen. Most people play queen e3. Actually, most people play queen d1 on the chess. Queen e3 is a better move, though. It's kind of close. And then, then knight f6 is what I recommend. Hit the pawn again. There is some weird line, like e5, and then knight g4, and then this. I'm trying to remember. Might be d6. have to cheat with the engine. Yeah, d6, we gambit a pawn, but we defend the knight, and after takes here, if takes again, we just take, and yeah, this is a really nice position. 
like full development. It's crazy that Black is down a pawn here, but the engine says Black's completely winning. Like white White's development is so bad. Can you teach the Alakine's defense? I'll admit that I'm not really a special a specialist in the Alakine. Um I could show the first few moves, but uh yeah, there's a lot of branches in the opening, so it's something that if you have like a question about a certain line, I'm I'm happy to try and answer. Oh, goodbye to Shinko. Thanks for being here. Have you found any improvements in the O'Sullivan? Yeah, I kind of stopped playing the O'Sullivan. <laughs> it's a, a dubious line in the Alakine, this B5 move. If anything, probably the improvement to the O'Sullivan is to not play the O'Sullivan. <laughs> Similar to the, the improvement of the Stafford Gambit. Play something a bit less dubious. One of the previous games I played in the Soul of it, my opponent just like completely refuted it. So yeah, for the person asking about the Alakine, um, if you're brand new to the opening, play knight d5. Most people play d4, I think. D4, if c4, you just drop the knight back, it's fine. And the point of this, even though you've kind of allowed white to control the center with the pawns, and you move your knight twice, you can use this e5 pawn as a target. And there's some potential to exploit the fact the pawn's overextended. Like if white takes, then you're happy to take back and then do some development, get a playable position. I forgot to make a new chapter. I could show one trap in the Alakine. Like if you're black and you want to be trappy, play this. Nine of three is a major line. And then, ah, what's the line here? I think take, take, and c6. And this looks a little bit innocuous at first. It's just kind of a random looking move. But there's a trappy line. If white plays c4, which isn't the main move, but it looks very logical. Hit the knight. Black can play knight b4. It's been fun watching vampire chicken play the elephant gambit. Oh, that's another one. Another opening I've um I've not explored so deeply. So anyway, we can see already based on the stats, knight b4 is scoring much better for black. But looking at the position, it seems strange. Like, how can this move at all be dangerous? Because it seems very logical for white to play a3 here. However, a3 is a huge mistake. And I actually walked into this once in a blitz tournament against a grandmaster who, uh, who punished me here. This is black to move and find a really nice tactic. One person says queen a5. Queen a5 looks clever using the, the pin on the a file, but queen a5 runs into bishop d2. So it doesn't really achieve much. Yeah, good job to everyone saying queen takes d4. Oh no, my queen. But this just works out beautifully for black. Now we see the point of the knight here. If takes, there's a fork. Black wins a clean pawn and takes away white's casting rights. And then if takes, we we're happy to take on e5. So I'm sure there's been oh there's there's been a couple of title players who fell for this. Yeah, queen takes e4. I'm also aware there's some, um, I think there's been a recent trend in the Alakine, 
like in the four pawns attack. Pretty sure this is what Fabiano played once. There's a move g5. Like if you want to like seriously study the Alakine and be prepared for the most topical lines, I'm pretty sure this g5 move has some venom. And I think it's a move that a lot of players just won't be prepared for. It guarantees like a a really crazy sharp game. Much pawn such attack. Yeah, but attack for who? Yeah, it's white playing the four pawns attack. The g5 is like a really cool counterattack. Of course, the point is to deflect the f pawn away, so then, like already here, white center falls apart. Knight c3, one of the most common moves. White has never won a game in this database. Engine says <laughs> Engine says white's much, much better. But maybe practically it's uh it's tricky. But this is plus four. Okay, maybe maybe slightly dubious. Wait, so knight c3. Ah, uh, bishop g7. I have three. Okay, this is interesting, because now the engine is like gradually changing its mind. g4. Knight h4. Yeah, this is probably one of the points. I get some crazy, crazy position. d5. Bishop takes e5. If white plays perfectly, white can probably get some... Some advantage. Can you show how to play against a Gioco piano? Um, what is a Gioco piano? I feel like I should. What's the difference between Gioco piano and Italian? Oh, just the Italian. Playing against the Gioco piano. I think I misspelled that. Wait, we can uh, we can check the the thing piano. Oh, so it's just yeah, it's just this position. But then there's a Greco attack. I think also known as a molar attack. Yeah, there's a lot of like sub variations to this king f1 i've never seen before wow yeah if you're asking about this position then i guess there's a few things you have to be ready for so as black you have to be ready for like the slower italian with d3 and usually c3 and then it's a bit slower of a game. But then you also have to be ready for the quick c3, d4. And these lines are a bit more concrete. And then you also have to be ready for Evan's Gambit. So one tip that I'll give that applies not just to this opening, but a lot of openings in general, is when you're studying something like the Gioco Piano, it's not just about learning a single line, even though maybe it's all encompassed into one name. It's about learning the different branches. And basically, you have to learn maybe four or five different um, different like mini openings within the, the larger opening, if that makes sense. So yeah, to play this position, you have to learn how to play against the Evans learn how to deal with this, and then, of course, learn how to play the slower positions. And sometimes, like at first, it might seem overwhelming, but if you break it into smaller pieces, focus on one thing at a time, also focus on what you encounter most often, then it's a lot more manageable. So I'm happy to maybe go into 
depth about like if you want to see like what what to do against Evans, what to do against the C three D four, what to do against the slower D three. C3, D3, guide, please. Show us how to destroy the Evans. Okay, maybe I can tackle one by one. There's um, there's an idea I saw recently against Evans, which I'm going to be mad at myself if I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it's this. There's some crazy move that Hari Krishnan played. Wait a minute. Hari Krishna. I'm just remembering. I had a dream last night I played Hari Krishna. Did I? I saw his name somewhere. It may have been in a dream. <laughs> anyway, um. There's an idea that I saw about a month ago. But I don't remember the idea. I just remember Hare Krishna played it. So what I'm going to do is use a site called Chess ABC. This is actually a site I use to prepare for opponents like at serious tournaments because they have an updated database. It's all like completely free too. And we can do prepare against black. And hopefully it has this game. And then we can play the Evans. So this is a tree of all Hare Krishna's black games. And he did encounter this uh, recently. Bishop a5. Ah, okay. So it's bishop a5 and then b5. Yeah, so if you want like something really sneaky to play against Evans that isn't so theoretical and that most likely your opponent will not be ready for there's a move b5 here and it's still completely reputable for black too and actually the hard krishna game isn't in the database because it's so recent but b5 is a cool move and if we look on b chess So if you're building out an opening repertoire, you should probably like make a study or make a chess base file on just this and then look at the major line. So bishop takes b5. The idea is knight takes d4. We exploit the fact the pawn is pinned. We hit the bishop. And white's already not getting the typical Evans gambit play because the bishop's no longer directed at the f-pawn and it's just hanging on b5. So most people do take, take back, queen takes, and then queen f6. And this seems like a really nice way just to neutralize the opening. Because Evans Gambit players like to attack. They don't like to trade queens and have a more positional game. GMJLH trophy. Oh, nice trophy. Welcome back, annoying mouse. So most people play e5, and then queen b6, nice move. So if white trades queens, then the structure is just really bad for white. Like all these pawns are weak, half open a file for black. And most people do trade queens. Best move, queen d3, and then black can develop. Castle, castle, bishop e3. And this queen is so slippery, just sliding back and forth, still offering the queen trade. But anyway, I think this is like a nice, simple line to, to keep in your back pocket if you play an Evans Gambit player. Thank you, Real Klein, with the first time sub. Was there someone asking for a, an Italian guide? 
Oh yeah, Obese Reese was asking for a C3, D3 guide. I can give one starting point. I mean, this is like a major opening. There's a ton of branches too, and there's a lot of ideas for both sides. Um, hey, welcome back, Kavita. Good to see you. Welcome back, everyone. Like all still maybe coming in, even if you're late. Yeah, if you're just joining, I played a couple hours of rapid chess. We've reached the point of the stream. I'm trying to provide as much wisdom and instruction as possible. Um, we're on the topic of how to play against a Gioco piano. We just looked at a cool idea against Evans Gambit. And against this opening, there's another game. This time I'm just going to Google it. It's Spraggett against Adams. Here we go. So I, I just typed in the names of the players, but it's this game. And the cool thing, when you find a chess games link, you can very easily copy the URL and bring it into WeChess. Oops, control V. I press control B that activated the confetti cannon. Very soon we'll have a reason for confetti. Wait, this is not the game. That's a Karo Khan. Where's the game? Spraggett. Is this it? This is it. Delete. Okay. So if you have no idea what to do against the Italian. So assuming you get this position, it can maybe come from a, a few different move orders. But um, sometimes when learning openings, if I don't know where to start, I'll just try and find games that inspire me. And then, then try and build an opening repertoire around a game that has a really nice idea, a really nice plan. And this is one of those games that uh, is very one-sided in Black's favor. And we're going to see how a super GM defeats a slightly weaker GM. And it starts pretty normally. Or maybe it starts maybe not the most normally. a6 is a subtle move, and then bishop a7. But Black is staying very flexible. Not making too many commitments, plays d6, castles. And basically what black was waiting for is rookie one. And once rookie one is played, then black has a really cool plan here. And the plan basically revolves around getting kingside play, exploiting this pawn with the move knight g4. And at first this move looks like a beginner's move. Like it's a, a one move attack, seems like h3 is coming. Uh, after white will defend. But the point is a bit deeper, is after rook e2, black plays king h8. Another seemingly random move. But the whole idea is to get in the move f5, and then get the rook, already the bishop, the knight, like a lot of pieces are involved to attack on the king side. And if we see how the position unfolds, is really, really nice for black. h3, knight h6. At first, it looks really ugly. Knight f1, and knight's on the rim. Black wasted, like, seemingly a lot of time <laughs> playing um, counterintuitive moves. But once f5 happens, it's just so pleasant. White took on h6. Black has double pawns, but has a pretty open position with the bishop pair. Already probably threatening bishop takes h3. And then from here, I mean, black just kept improving, optimizes the rooks. Pieces are just so well harmonized. And eventually goes for a plan. Okay, starts with h5 and then bishop d7. The bishop wants to go to this square eventually. So knight e7. So knight's coming in, bishop's coming in. And then eventually there's a really cool knockout blow. Yeah, bishop c6, bishop b5. Wait for it, wait for it. 
I think it was this position. Black to move. Yeah, Adams played one more move and white resigned. So I'll give Twitch chat a moment to try and find the, the killer blow. And then eventually we can get some to some other questions as well. There might be multiple good moves, but there's one move that is the simplest. I see a couple people saying queen a1, which looks strong, but then rookie one. So that would not prompt resignation. So good job to the people saying bishop f1. Yeah, always play bishop f1. Oh yeah, um, I'm showing all of this in a Lee chess study. So all of the analysis is saved. Study link is in the chat. If there's people that want to analyze on your own or clone the study. And the reason why this is so deadly is the rook is trapped. A black is just full, fully dominant here. And if knight takes f1, then black takes this knight. Everything is crumbling for white because the rook is attacked and knight f2 is coming. There's four attackers against f2. And this rook is pinned. So anyway, this is um, this is like a model game that whenever I feel inspired to play into an Italian, I, I usually like reviewing this game, just seeing how everything flowed so nicely in Black's favor from this early idea. There's another game too. Um, Rosenthal, Magnus Carlsen. So again, I just Google the player names. I'll bring the link into the study. And this will give one more glimpse into how to play against Italian. And we'll see that they got a very similar position to the previous game. Like if we compare the two positions, like this compared to this. The difference in this game, I should not note, Magnus Carlsen playing black against Nicky Rosenthal, who is a good player, but not quite, not quite the, the level of Magnus. Um, and the position was a little bit different because there's no knight g4 idea. So here we're going to see how Magnus, using all his like world champion super grandmaster strength, takes down someone who's still pretty good at chess, but won't crack easily. And I really like the way Magnus played in this game because he was, he was very patient and just built up like small advantages, starting with castling, bishop b3. So you could get this position from a, a few different move orders like with bishop b3 earlier, but basically white's played h3, so you can't go for this idea. So Magnus goes for another idea Starts with h6, sometimes useful and discouraging, bishop g5. After knight d2, rook e8, knight f1, bishop e6. And very soon we'll see, not only is he, okay, completing development, but he's preparing the move pawn d5. And this game white played a little bit passively, and Magnus just took full advantage. So after d5... It got better because he plays pawn d4. Just gain space. This bishop is sad now. After a3. Yeah, he found just good squares for the pieces. Like the knight ready to come to the queen side. Maybe opens up queen f6 or pawn f6. And then plays b5. So induces some weakness on the queen side. Other knight drops back. Like, very, very solid play. C6 maybe opening up this. Like, every move is a useful, improving move. I think he's going for bishop g5 here. 
Yeah, trade the darks for bishops. And then, yeah, eventually he wins a pawn. Like, this knight actually got stuck. And g4 would walk into knight f4. And then once he wins a pawn, it was, I think, pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, again, full domination. Controls the b-file. And eventually... Keeps making progress. It was a longer game, but very nice strategic game from the lock side. Yeah, monster pawns. Yeah, pretty savage finish. Thank you, Jay. Hey, hey, hey. Happy 20. Welcome back to Tio Twaggy. Yeah, this is Rosie Chest. Yeah, um... Nikki Rosenthal, maybe he goes by a few names, used to be known as Frolic, uh, but he's been around for a while. This was a game played in the Pro Chess League back in 2017. So, anyway, I hope this helps in some way for those that maybe don't, don't know how to play against Italian or struggle playing against Italian Gioco Piano. Sometimes you just want to find games that inspire you. So I'm sorry if I missed questions earlier, but I'm trying to be thorough with the questions I am answering. Is it generally a good idea to trade a bishop for a knight if it forces opponent to double pawns on A or H? Yeah, it's really hard to speak in general terms. Um, like, generally, it depends on the position. <laughs> I had a game... What was the game? It was this one, right? There was a game uh, I played earlier this stream where as early as move four, I had the choice of to do exactly this, to double my opponent's pawns. Oops. But in this case, I chose not to, even though maybe it was the best move. Yeah, sometimes, like, it's fine not to. It's fine to go for it. In this case, I didn't want to concede the bishop pair. I thought these pawns aren't super weak. But there's other times where it's it's fine to go for. This is actually one of those times it's completely fine to go for. Are you planning to do a speed run at some point? Yeah, I've um I have to message chess.com support to get like a verified speedrun account. But if I did a speed run, I don't think I would call it a speed run. I would probably want to like get feedback from viewers of what I should call it. So I'd more like to do it similar to Naraditsky, where it's more of a slow, like instructive series. Like how to play at different rating levels, different lessons and different kind of mistakes that you see at different rating levels. A slow run. <laughs> I've seen um I've seen different terms on at least on youtube speed run slow run the climbing the rating ladder beginner to master oh you saw danya interviewing magnus after world cup ah he was on the um i assume on the chess 24 broadcast Are we going to see Magnus retiring from classical? I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure Magnus is playing a, another classical tournament before the end of the year. But is it official? Wait a minute.
Yeah, so one one resource I'll give. Um, I'm sure most people watching know about this website, but this is where you can see the live rating list of the top players in the world and kind of see recent games that they've played, how it affects their rating. This is 2700chess.com. But one feature to the site that maybe some people don't know about is you can see the upcoming tournaments. It shows the upcoming tournaments and which top players are playing. So if we scroll down here, Magnus will be playing the Qatar Masters in October. So I assume that's his next event. Um, Because he's not playing the world team. European, I doubt he's playing. Probably not playing the candidates. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe this could be his last classical event. Oh, is he playing the European Club Cup? In Albania? Ah, oh, yeah, he played last year. Last year was in, like, Austria, I think. Hey, it's cake. It's cake June. Bono, my queen. Kasparov in 1999, maybe. Did Kasparov blunder his queen in 1999? <laughs> hmm. I don't think Magnus is playing Singfield Cup. Although I'm not sure if they announced the player list yet. He sacrificed two rooks in 1999. Wow. Oh, is he playing Grand Swiss? That's another tournament coming up. I guess Grand Swiss is right after the Qatar Masters. On Tata Steel too. When are you getting your next norm? I think I'm I'm very close to announcing my next tournament. I'm actually really excited to announce my next tournament. But it'll have to wait until like the details are are finalized. Tell us. <laughs> I really want to, but it'll have to wait. Unlikely to be the candidates. My only chance of getting to the candidates is to somehow play Grand Swiss. But I don't think there's any way for me to even like get a special invitation. Maybe I could like ask to be a photographer there. And then if there's an odd number of players, I can ask if I can fill in. That would be a weird way to make the candidates. Yeah, assuming my next tournament is broadcast, which it probably will be, then um, hopefully Jonathan will be around to uh, take over the channel again. I will say that I'm, I'm hoping to play the World Cup qualifiers. Because this past one, I didn't even know was happening until it already happened. There was a tournament in Dominican Republic this year. It was announced like two or three months before that was a qualifier for World Cup. So I think that would be a fun one to play in. How many points do you need to become Grandmaster? I need a lot of rating points. I think just over 150 more rating points. I also need three norms, which in some sense could be more difficult than the rating points. You should do meet and greets when you travel. Actually, when I um, I was in Germany for a few days this past Europe trip, and the final day I was in Munich, I showed up at the local chess meetup. And, like I didn't plan it ahead of time. I only found out about the meetup like through a Google search a few hours before. 
but I showed up and then stayed for maybe about two and a half, three hours, or maybe 15 to 20 people there throughout the night. It was fun. I tried to keep a low profile, but like at least half the people <laughs> knew who I was. So I couldn't quite go undercover. Yeah, I went to a, a couple chess meetups in London too. Shout out to London chess community. Also, thank you, Quantum. Happy 16. Okay, what to do? Should I finish with something something a little less a little less typical? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to wrap things up soon, but I'll finish with Crazy House. How about? I see I see the seek. I can't resist. Okay. <laughs> I've been playing some more chess variants recently. Also, this is three second crazy house. Oh dear. So the way this works, when you capture a piece, it becomes your own piece. And we have three seconds with a two second increment. So it's gonna be a constant time warning. So far, it's like a, a pretty solid position. Solid play. Play this move. Okay, so because pawns were captured, if I want to, I could place a pawn here. I had to defend this, though. Yeah, this is about to get really crazy. Like It's a pretty tame game so far. Okay, I can trap the bishop. Don't mess with my pawn. Oh, wow. Opponent sacks a rook for the knight. So now they have a knight to place. Let's drop back with a queen. Preventing knight of g2. Hey, I won on time. That was definitely not the craziest crazy house game I played. Okay, I'll take a rematch. Um, let's play a few knights. Oh no, my knight. I think this is okay though. Go for a, a fun attack. Bishop's a little bit stuck. But I might win the pawn. Ooh. Okay, I'll save the queen. I'll take this. So I won back the knight. Oh wow, it's getting crazy again. Threatening this or this. This is a double checkmate threat. So white has no pieces to place. Oh, but now it has a pawn. Let's play this. And maybe castle. King safety first. So I pin the bishop. I'm going to protect my king. Let's pin the knight. Take the knight. Take the bishop. Take the queen. Um, let's defend. Oh, it's about to get real crazy. Uh, do I have mate? Opponent's defending. I have this move. So I'll recapture the pawn. And the king's so safe, though. What is this? Take this. 
Don't hurt me. Queen A8 was a move. Take this. No. Ah. Oh, no. No, this is not going well. About to win on time, though. Don't hurt me. Ah, I'm getting hurt. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> One more game. Okay, this will probably be my final Crazy House game. I'm going to play a London because it's the only opening I know. What does this move? Play Bishop E2. Yeah, I think it's important to like build up a time advantage earlier. Build up a central advantage. I'm getting kicked around here. Yeah, this is one of the crazier variants. But something a little bit different to finish things off with. Let's play F4. I can take this first, maybe. Wow. So black does not have a... Oh, but black has this bishop. But misses it. Yeah, this looks okay now. I'm threatening... I'm not sure if I'm threatening mate. Queen g4 maybe. Let's take this. Okay. That was fun. Okay. So, I could analyze this with engine. It's so cool that we have, uh, yeah, engine analysis for variants. I'm sure blunders were made. I wonder if it takes longer for the engine to like work through a crazy house game. I made three blunders. Wait, Bishop G5 was a blunder. Oh, Queen A5 check. It's like a normal chess tactic. <laughs> Is the stream ending? Um, I could do a few more. I will wrap things up quickly, though. Wait, let me check my uh, my stats. Because I have a couple of these, like, trophy things. Crazy House, I need a rating deviation. I need a rating deviation of 65. So I need to play a few more games. Oh, yeah, in Crazy House, you can't put pawns on the the first or eighth ranks only between two and seven hopefully that makes sense opponents offline oh they're back online okay Mm. 
have to take. Moving a little bit too slowly. Trying to be safe here. Trying to be ultra safe. Oh no. Okay, opponent missed knight g6. Let's take. I don't know what to do in this move. I have all the bishops, and the opponent has all the knights. I have 17 seconds, though. Why do I have all the dark square bishops? Don't mess with my bishops. Uh-oh, this is bad. Yeah, good move. This is so unpleasant. Ah. Oh, that was rough. Okay, we'll do we'll do one or two more. Yeah, this is maybe crazier than five E chess. Maybe not, but maybe close. I feel like my opponent knows theory here. Just knows more strategy. Okay, I'm not castling. Ah, I'm losing a pawn. Ah, losing a piece. Got some pawns for it. A pawn here would be really annoying. Oh no, a knight here. A knight here is okay. I'm getting hurt. Am I getting mated? Not yet. Oh no, my queen. Oh no, my king. This is mate. GG. A strong opponent. Yeah, this would be hard to do over the board. Like one minute crazy house over the board. Be very difficult. Okay, I'm playing a Pierce. Maybe not the best opening for this game. Hmm. Like, I don't know what my strategy is, which is a little bit concerning. Oh, that was not a good strategy. I'm losing a pawn. Okay, holding on. I'm getting overpowered. I'm just getting mated by force. Wow. Oh no, my king. This is a very humbling experience, though. Probably a lot to learn. 
I don't know this opening. I guess we're playing some Italian. I wonder how much I can follow normal chess moves. Yeah, king safety is a very important factor. Oh my gosh, I just allowed pawn e2. Oh, it's getting worse though. Am I getting mated? Doesn't look great. Opponent has no knight to place. I should not have placed a knight though. Dear. Don't hurt me. Ha <laughs> My spite checks didn't work. Okay. Let me win one game. Playing another modern. Wait, can I take this? Oh, that's not good. I'll take this. So I want a pawn. This is a good opening for me. I feel like I have a chance in this game. I have to start using my pieces. Hey, Eric. Hope Hello. you are well. Thank you, Arjorno. Yeah, pawn has no pieces to place. Now has a pawn. But I think I'm in good shape. Has one bishop. So I'm up a lot of material. Let me build a house around my king. That's such a beautiful house. Don't mess with my pawn formation. I have 13 seconds. Ah, I don't know what to do. Okay. I won on time. <laughs> I just had to keep my king safe. That was a fun one. Okay. Final game. This is what I would play in normal chess. This is an interesting opening. Okay. 
Okay, some attack. Oh no. Not some night move. Maybe it's okay though. Confusing position. That's probably a very strong move. Am I getting hurt? Probably. But how bad is it? I'm going to win the bishop. Black has pieces. Do I take the bishop? Probably not. Just defend. Let's be solid. Playing it safe. Playing it very safe. Using the pawn strategy again. Have to surround my king with pawns. Hey, it's Checkmate. <laughs> As a, a nice mating idea. I think Black had to play uh, this move. I didn't need any of these other pieces. I just needed my knight and my bishop to deliver the mate. Okay. Do I have an official Crazy House rating now? Oh, I still need to play a few more games, but I think I'll save it for the future. Also, thank you to I Love Pizza and Chicken, gifting to Mr. G3NX. Oh, we almost have a hype train. If it turns out to be a hype train, I'll keep the stream going. But if not, maybe I'll end things. Let me check my um my placing. So I would be like around top hundred. Yeah, because I'm I'm just over twenty three hundred. Or twenty three fifty. Yeah, it put me somewhere around here. Okay, I'm going to wrap things up. I need some food. It's time to also maybe get some fresh air. Let's send the raid to Ben and Karen. Although I think it's just Ben for the time being. So send some love, some good vibes, some energy. And I'll be back probably tomorrow do some viewer challenges tomorrow for sub Sunday Ben is streaming sub Saturday so do stay tuned and I'll be back soon adios